live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live US 2019. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to San Diego. The Cube has been live here at Cisco Live for the last three days. Stu Miniman with me, Lisa Martin, wrapping things up, and we're pleased to welcome to the Cube for the first time James Slaney, the co-founder and head of product for Dubber. James, welcome to the Cube. Thank you very much. All right, so Dubber, before we get into who you guys are, why you started this company, Stu thought maybe this had to do with your love of dubstep, the name? Oh uh, well, we do like dubstep. But Wait, it, tell it, us it, about it, the name. Probably wasn't the reason. Uh, me and my co-founders were involved with telecommunications and in that industry, and we thought the cloud was coming quite fast. And we thought that you know we saw it, uh, an opportunity that, as much as uh, telcos were trying to move services to cloud, there was value adds they needed to provide, and there wasn't really a quality solution for recording phone calls. So it came from dubbing tape to tape back in the day. Those. Uh, viewers can remember when we had cassette yeah, yeah. tapes. The name came from, I, it, that's how I remember we came, we came about the name, is that we're thinking, you know, like cassette to cassette was dubbing, and then, you know, dubber came out of that, and it was available. So tell us, our audience, about cl call, cloud-based call recording. Yep. Tell us a little bit about that, but why? What was the impetus for you saying, you know what, there's a gap in the market, we got to solve it? Yeah, so everything, the, the, the traditional providers, we're all, you know, on-premise, CapEx-based uh, servers, licensing, all that traditional you know, software model. Uh, with, the, with the transition to cloud for telephony, so unified communications or anything like that, uh, the ability to have a platform that could record content really by switching it on, whether it was, uh, so we partnered with telcos, so I, say, I say telcos, I'm Australian, sorry about that. So carriers or service providers, how they want to hear about what they're called. Um, connect to their network and then offer it at scale. So they could switch on one user or literally switch on 100,000 users instantly and we manage the back end of that and they could just sell it as a service. Yeah, it's interesting. So Lisa and I were at the Enterprise Connect show this year yep. and one of the themes we got out of the week of doing that show is while there's always the cool new technologies, we're doing video and you know, there's VR and you know, people use chatbots or ways to do there, voice is still critical. Yep. Um, so maybe talk about you know, your customer base and you know, the, the role that you're playing to help them and you know, still that, that voice is, is such an important piece of how we communicate. Yeah, it's really interesting. Like, we still look at that, the important things that are done via voice. If you've, if you've got an important customer you know, uh, discussion to have, you're not going to send them an email, you're probably going to follow it up with a phone call or initiate with a phone call. Uh, and most of the time, th that data is, is lost. So you know, you, you'll be things we discuss and you don't get them back. And, you know, generally call recording, if, we're, if you're looking at that, uh, people think contact center and regulatory reasons like financial services, and that's our bread and butter. But now we're seeing with the, I suppose, the, the more cloud-based options that businesses are starting to expand that use case across outside of that traditional reason. And not just call recording, you know, AI is now you know, becoming more prevalent as well. And so how are you guys infusing AI into what you're doing, and also with Cisco, to not only be able to apply intelligence to the data that you're gathering from recorded calls, but also do so in a way that also facilitates security and privacy. Yeah, so security is core. Cool. We, we, you know, we, we couldn't have a platform that's used it, that's connected to you know, AT&T's network. Um, we've got over 100 telco or carrier networks connected globally at the moment. Uh, that's across Europe, America, uh, Canada, and, and, and Asia as well. And now you know, we, we've been chosen by Cisco for their, their broad cloud platform, which they recently acquired. Um, what we see is that because we can capture content at scale, we then can actually easily then produce transcriptions, sentiment, tone, from the best of breed providers around the world. Well, it might be us, but you know, we could use any other third party provider that the customer might want to use. The use case then can be go towards a small business who might, you know, I'll say a small business and I'll explain an enterprise. In a small business, their sales person might be speaking to their main customer, the main customer rings up and is not happy, and we're never going to tell the boss or the team leader, but they can automate literally a, a easy automation saying a notification to the owner or the team leader, you should call this customer back. Without that, they lose the potential of actually retaining that customer. Now that, previously, that's only really the large business really only has the technology to do that or the ability to actually get it to market with us and because we're connected to the network or even on, you know, easily on a, like a call manager solution through Cisco, th that's any size of business. Large business, we're seeing, I'll say a bank as an example, they're looking to capture everything across their whole business, not just contact center, 
and start looking for keywords that I said, so I'll say credit card or home loan, and then make sure that, that their agent or their employee is disclosing that product correctly to their customer to make sure they're compliant. Now, they're, they're now talking about that across the, the whole business. So not just, I'll use an example, 4,000 seats in a contact center, but 40,000 across their whole business on any phone they're using at the moment, whether it's a mobile or cellular or a, a desk phone. Okay, so bring us inside your customers. Is that, you know, you mentioned call centers. Is that the primary use case? Do you go into different verticals? You know, what, what does your customer base look like? Yeah, we definitely go like, as I said, so contact centers for sure. Yeah. Uh, and that's, it's, a, it's been there for a long time, that requirement to record phone calls and do it, and do it well. Uh, uh, financial services markets are out throughout the world, in the US as well, in, the, uh, in, in Europe because of uh, MIFID and all those requirements are completely compliant. But as I said, we, we are now expanding that use case because of AI and the requirement to access data. Um, also, our platform is an open, open platform, if that makes sense. But, so everything we record or capture is encrypted, but it is in a format that the end customer can use as they want to apply it themselves. They're all looking at using AI, you know, they're all in other, other data sources in their company because it's available, they can use it with Dubber. Well, yeah, and actually I just wanted to poke at that because one of the challenges we have out there is there's a lot of data, but how do I actually extract value out of that? So yep. is this now a way for your customers to really unlock something that historically you, you just, you, you might have kept it for compliance reasons or you know, to review some kind of training, but it was a little bit tough to get in and leverage the information that was in there. Yeah. You know. Companies today are really, they're, they're assessing you know, anything that's in, in written format today. They're already using AI to do that. Previously, it's been really hard to do that with voice. Now, because we can capture it again, capture it at scale, they now can look at it and say, can we use the same tools we're looking for everything else in our business and look at now and apply that for voice? Yeah. So, walk us through an example of where Dubber is integrated into an organization. If we think of a bank, and you mentioned you know, the use cases, one of them piqued my interest about, okay, sentiment. If there is an issue that needs to be escalated and somebody in the organization needs to call a customer because what's been recorded is yep. indicating that, is Dubber able to integrate with like marketing automation, CRM tools, so that that data is then pulled in and mapped back to that account and how it's being managed? Yeah, correct. It's a good, good, really good question. I probably didn't explain, but we are a global platform. So we're deployed everywhere in the world. So uh, in Australia, so I'm from Australia again, but the US, Canada, uh, Singapore, Japan, London, Ireland, and, and the UK. Uh, we record in that, in that country, we store in that country, but it is a scalable platform as a service, which means that uh, we run a productized API, it's an open API, whether we've integrated with their application or the customer then can say, we never want to log into the Dubber's applications, we just want to present all the data in our own applications already. That's already productized today, it's available today. As an example, if they wanted to use uh, Salesforce is a CRM, they log in there, look at the contact, and they can see all the, all the calls, all the transcriptions directly in Salesforce. That's cool, so they get that visibility yep. in a way that, that works for them. Yep, yeah, so we're not precious. We look at ourselves as a platform first, and we provide applications. We know users need to use call recording as they expect to use it, like with permission-based access, team management. But in reality, we're trying to make it fit into the way they, they operate their own business and get more insights. All right, so James, we're here at Cisco Live, so explain to us how you tie into what's uh, going on here at the show. Uh, you know, we're here in the DevNet zone. Uh, I'm curious if you talked about being an open platform. Do you yeah. tie into any of the development pieces here? Yeah, we've, we've had some really good conversations over the last three days. Uh, it's interesting to see people talk about, you know, they come up and they start talking about call recording and then we explain what we've just discussed in relation to open and they can access via API. And, they start thinking, they can see their mind thinking about how they can apply that into their own business. Um, we've always, you know, we've always worked with Cisco. Um, even, you know, we've always worked with Broadsoft, which they've now acquired, and they now pay, make that part of their business. But, you know, whether it's call manager, uh, we, they've now announced they're doing WebEx calling. You know, we're, we're talking to customers about call recording through Dubber on WebEx calling now. So if a, if a business is, you know, having a plan to, you know, uh, move their, from the on-prem to cloud with Cisco, we, we, we make a, like a unified solution for them and they can make a roadmap for that with them. So it's a really good conversations we're having here. So in the development of a go-to-market strategy, or yeah, have, so do you already have an established GTM with Cisco? No, we already have a strategy. We already have a, we're a partner of Cisco already. Um, we've got over 100 carriers who use Cisco in their network, so we're already connected to them and we're already recording and capturing content on those networks. So we're pretty tight with Cisco, for sure. Uh, but like, you look at the enterprise, the enterprises are not all got cloud yet, they're already moving to that. So 
So if they want to have a call recording solution or an AI solution on-prem, and they might want to move to cloud in the future, we are that in the future. So doing it now is probably, they can just maintain the same service right through. So can you give us an example of a, a customer success that is leveraging Deborah with Cisco? Whether you, you can anonymize it or if you can name it, great. But we'd love to see how it's really working in action to drive business results. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I'm trying to think of the best one to give you at the moment. Uh, I can think of a, a, a customer of ours with, you know, in the UK, they're spread across, uh, I think around 800 locations. They're currently recording with Dubber and using transcription to you know, transcribe their calls and looking for patterns across their whole business. And they're using Cisco for their, for their telephony. Uh, and then looking at that, and they've actually found things to re reduce the save, the save money. Um, they've been losing some money in certain locations and they've used the transcription seen patterns and actually implemented changes to actually sell, save that. Awesome. So, in terms of the last three days of Cisco Live, some of the announcements that have come out, Cisco has been on this transition from yep. a hardware company, network gear back in the day, to now introducing APIs across the product portfolio, which even two years ago they didn't have. Yeah. So this pivot towards a software focus. For a company like Dubber, born in the cloud, what does that signify to you guys? Uh, so you say, what does it say to us? What, yeah, what does that signify to Dubber? Um, well, it's actually it's great for us, and it's really important for us to make sure we're aligned to that. Uh, we've already always been an API first company, and you know, accessing the content is always, but it's a challenge maybe sometimes for businesses to embrace that. Um, we we need to make sure that we're, we're we're looking at Cisco and understanding how they want to use APIs and and aligning ourselves, um, and hopefully push them along a bit because we've been doing it for a while. Uh, so we released our API, you know, five years ago. It was cloud based. And now it's good for that. everyone else has started talking about APIs and applying that. Awesome, well James, it's been a pleasure to have you on theCUBE this afternoon with Stu and me. Thanks for stopping by and sharing what Deborah is doing with Cisco and to really help transform enterprises from any industry. We appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. All right, and we can't close theCUBE at Cisco Live in San Diego without saying this one thing which we're all going to do together. You ready oh, really? guys? <laughs> on my count, three, two, one. Stay, Stay classy, classy San, San Diego. Diego. We're Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.